Hello and welcome to Lot49 TV. Today I will be touching on a recent development in Jill Stein's appeal against the FEC's ruling that she repay over $175,000 in primary matching funds. I will also go into further detail on the case, so let's get stuck in. Right, this is from an, uh, a newsletter written by Jill Stein on May 19th. I'm writing to you with great news to report from our court case appealing the FEC's demand that I personally repay, that she, that she personally repays over $175,000 in public matching funds that the Green campaign used to get on the ballot in 2016. In short, the FEC has been trying to withhold evidence in the record that, that makes their case. This is the financial information statements, receipts, expenditures that prove that they don't actually owe this money. And this is an article from the Well News, um, written by Dan McHugh uh, on November the 5th last year, uh, that outlines um, the basics of the, uh, the case. Um, and the, the FEC's, um, yeah, the FEC's ruling on this. Um, former Green Party candidate Jill Stein and her campaign committee, Jill Stein for President, are asking the U.S. Court of Appeals in the District of Columbia to review a Federal Elections Commission order that she repay that much money uh, that she received during the 2016 presidential primaries. In late September, the FEC ruled that the payments made made to Stein for money she raised during after she received a Green Party presidential nomination on August the 6th, 2016, were improper and should not have been sent to her. During an audit of her accounts, the FEC staff found Stein received a total of 590000 $936 in matching funds during the 2016 primary season, and that, she was con and that she continued to use public funds past a point when she was legally eligible, like, yeah, when she was legally allowed to. Um, the commission audit found Stein received a payment of $134,900 in January 2017 that she shouldn't have accepted. Um, Donald Trump probably may have been in office, at that, may have been sworn into office at that time. Um, that plus another $40,372 in funds the committee had on hand following the presidential campaign make up for one hundred. Yeah, make up the 175272 the FEC says she now owes. Stein argued that she was also seeking the Peace and Freedom Party nomination and didn't and that it didn't nominate until mid August twenty sixteen. So the cut off point should have been the date of that party's convention and not um the uh, the Green Party's convention. The FEC, however, held that because the two major parties had both finished their nominating process by July 28, 2016, the date of her receiving of that last minor, minor party nomination doesn't matter. I don't see what that has to do with anything. I mean, it's not that the Republican and Democratic parties have already finished their, their um, primaries. It's got nothing to do with when the... Um, Freedom and Peace and Freedom Party nominations have. According to documents posted on the FEC website, the Stein for President campaign had tried to raise a number of other arguments as to why it shouldn't have, re have to repay the money. These include a claim that the campaign used the money in a bid to gain ballot access in a number of states, and that her campaign also had a number of winding down expenses it had to pay, including paying consultants and others who provided services to her election effort. As to a latter for FEC staff 
who received a claim concluded for merely mentioning the subject of winding down expenses in the written submission without any explanation, reasoning or argument is insufficient to raise an issue for administrative review. I'm going back to this. Thanks to the heroic efforts of attorney Oliver Hall at the Centre for Competitive Democracy, who is leading the appeal, the court has now ruled that FEC cannot exclude these critical evidence, all the um, financial information about where the money was spent. Um, this is the Centre for Com Competitive Democracy piece on the uh, with regards to it, written by Oliver Hall in December last year. Um, CCD is taking 2016 Green Party presidential candidate Dr Jill Stein's long-running legal battle against the Federal Election Commission to the DC Circuit Court of Appeals. On September 30th, 2021, nearly five years after the 2016 presidential election, the FEC notified Dr. Stein that she and her campaign committee must repay $175,000 in primary matching funds received during that election. The Stein campaign spent the funds on petition drives to attain ballot access nationwide, activ activity that the FEC itself identifies as equivalent to a primary election. But the FEC nevertheless, nevertheless concluded that the expenditures were not qualified primary expenses. Now it is demanding repayment of the entire amount, and Dr. Stein herself is personally liable for the payment. The FEC is treating this matter as a routine audit, said the author. But in order to repay $175,000 five years after the fact, when the Stein campaign is effectively terminated and has no funds is punitive in extreme. The CCD, therefore, has filed a petition for review of the FEC's repayment order in the DC Circuit. The appeal will be briefed and argued in the coming months. Then the court will decide whether to vacate the FEC's order or provide other relief. Meanwhile, Dr. Stein has been forced to withdraw $175,000 from her retirement savings and deposited it in an escrow, escrow account until her appeal is decided. If the FEC is permitted to enforce this order, it will have a devastating impact on Dr. Stein personally, Hall said, but it will also deter other qualified candidates from seeking matching funds for their campaigns. After all, who can afford the risk of getting stuck with a $175,000 bill five years after the election? Turning to this one again. Now, with our legal brief due next month, the real battle is about to begin. We're almost we're almost 90% of the way to our previous fundraising goal, but we still need over 4000 to be able to pay our current operating expenses residual debts and assorted legal costs separate from and in addition to the pro bono appeal. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you found it informative. Citations and links to the sources used can be found down in the description. And as with all YouTube channels, please feel free to leave a like, comment, share and subscribe. So until next time, have a good day.